Welcome back to A Conversation About. Um, today, I have a good friend, Jeanette, joining us for a conversation. I think we have a lot of really good conversations um, outside of all of this, so I'm really excited for this. Um, I don't know where it's going to go, but I think we flow very well, so wherever it goes, I think, I think it's going to be gonna really cry. interesting. Um, if you cry, I'm here to support you. Uh, oh. We might edit it out if we need to. <laughs> which is, which if is I okay. pull out Kim K ugly cry. Oh no. Oh no. Um, but anyways, Jeanette, it's a pleasure to have you. Dude, let's go back to how this happened. Okay. When we had lunch and I was like, well, no. Yes. One of the goals that I haven't accomplished was starting my own podcast. And then I got a random message from him. I was like... It was not a random. No, oh, well, we were okay, but we were talking. We not were about talk this. Yeah, and like you mentioned, and I was like, oh, "This is it. Like this is my opportunity. This is the, yeah. you know, like if I don't take this one, I'm never gonna know where to start, how to do yeah. it, how to talk. I I would never know the process. So. Yeah, you need an icebreaker for sure. Um, and it's like as we've noticed, it's really hard to just like start talking and yeah. um like figure out what you can say on camera, what you can't say on camera. You know what people are gonna see, what people are not gonna see. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm happy that you you took this as an opportunity and not I, only I, an opportunity because like if it grows or whatever. Yeah. I'm just seeing it like this is it like this is what I've always wanted to do and okay. I've never been given this chance or opportunity. Like nobody invited me on. I don't know anybody um, that has one. So. Well, I'm I'm happy this could be the start for you. And if our conversation flows really well and we want to do this again weekly every two weeks, Ooh, monthly, nice. um, I would be open to that. Or if you just kind of want to do your own thing and say, this guy's weird and, you know, I don't want to talk <laughs> to him ever bit. again, <laughs> then, you know, that won't hurt my feelings. I'll go home and cry a little bit, but <laughs> typical Saturday night, I guess. Dude, I freaking have to, I see you mostly throughout my week, so mm -hmm. you would have been so cut be, off a yeah, long time ago. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if I call you weird or not, I still got to see you, so. <laughs> yeah, there's no avoiding me. <laughs> there is I'm no kidding. avoiding me. They always come back, I think you said, right? <laughs> yes. They do always come back. They go cheese, man, but we'll talk about that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's talk about it now. But no, I think what we really wanted to talk about was um, growth. And I think you had a really good question to start us off. So, just because it came out, like, mm -hmm. while, while we were talking about growth. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, oh, shit, like... 10, five years ago, did I see myself here? Like, am I proud or what would I do different? Um, I don't know. Like, five years ago, where do you see yourself? Are you happy with where you are now or what would you change? I saw it. So before I answer that question, I saw a tweet a couple of days ago. Actually, I just remembered this um, that said um, the you from five years ago is proud of the you you are now. And I was oh. like, oh, that's so sweet. I think I am so proud of myself. Like, not knowing I needed this, though. Because, mm -hmm. you know, five years ago, it was like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to live in Austin. It's always something I wanted. And everybody that knows me, when I brought up this opportunity, they're like, you always wanted to go there. For context, we are in Austin now. Yeah. yeah. We're in Austin, we're Texas. In Austin now, okay. <laughs> 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 no, we're not hippies. <laughs> So then, um, like, five years ago, this is not what I imagined, though. Like, ew, I, I don't want to be saying like It's hard so much, to, no, but, it's, a, it's, so um, part of, like, having, like, social interactions like this is you realize you say like a lot. I say like a lot in all of my podcast okay. episodes, so that's something I'm working on. Um, so it's a learning experience as well as a podcast episode. So, yeah, um, it's just... That's my main question to myself and to you and to everybody I encounter. Like when it does get personal or uh, in an interaction like we had with our boss, I think that mm -hmm. lunch was awesome. You know, yeah. I t I told you guys about how my boutique started. Mm -hmm. um, there's more background to that, by the way. Anyways, um, five years ago, now that you say that, my, five years ago, me is so proud of. I'm happy to hear that. It's I'm really so happy to hear that. Yes. I would say Although the same. I'm not with the person that I would have wanted to be with right now, everything's flowing so good, like overall. That's what matters, yeah. And my kids are happy. My kids are 
are my biggest supporters. Like, they were so happy about this. Oh, when that's you really went sweet. to go buy that, they were like, oh my gosh, mom. And they kept hugging me. Like, right now, they just came out to hug me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, I'm not fucking famous yet. <laughs> yes, yeah. but we will be. We will be. Yes. So, I think to answer your question, it's really hard to have a five-year plan. Like, it's really hard to plan five years in advance. At least for me. Like, I... Five years ago, I was starting college and I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, looking back, I think the me from five years ago is proud of the me I am now because of the growth we had, oh. which we'll get into. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, I feel like I was a completely different person, just like completely full of myself and had a, a really toxic attitude towards the world. Um, and meeting other people and like doing social work now and like hearing everybody else's experiences helped me grow a lot. So I think my when five years ago, I just wanted to be done with school. I wanted to be done with school. I wanted to have money. Um, I mean, I wanted to have some kind of decent relationship. Um, I'm done with school. <laughs> I don't know about the other two. So <laughs> I don't know about the we other two. We make good money. We make decent money. We make yeah. decent money. Yeah. Um, we make decent money, but, you know, student loans and all this other stuff that I don't want to get into, you know, yeah. it kind of brings you down a little bit. Um, but I, I think I, I think I'm on the right path. And that's, that's reassuring. I think that's, that's good. Like, that's enough for ourselves. Hmm. And I've never even, I mean, yeah, moving here, I realized, like, relationships that haven't reached out relationships that haven't checked in in my part or theirs fuck it that phone works fuck both it. ways you that know, phone like, works both ways fuck it you know we know we that person and i or i can say i'm enough and i will mm -hmm. be here if you reach out and if i'm not yeah. fuck it you're lost <laughs> you know like oh my gosh overall I am learning to value myself. Whether I get my decent pay, whether five years ago, I actually I can say my five years ago, mm -hmm. like I said, is proud of me. I've accomplished everything. That That's really good. Yeah, I actually have accomplished everything in life. I did not see myself being a parent at all, not even a young parent. Um, shit happens. Um, and five years ago, this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's my biggest thing about, I beat myself up. This is what I wanted and I want more and I want more. And even yeah. with relationships, like I get where I want and I want more and I want more. I don't know how to look at it. Like, is that okay? Is that something I need to work on that nothing is ever enough for me? Or should I look at it like, Bitch, you got goals. Like, no, you yeah. get there and you want more. Like, and I even told our boss that recently. And I was like, I hold myself and my kids up to a standard because mm -hmm. I never want them to be comfortable. Yeah. So if they grew up with $300 shoes, they better be able to be adults and afford that mm -hmm. or more. Yeah. If not, like, you're going backwards. And that's the mindset that you I want them to up. have. You always I'm like, level you need up. to see, like... When I was 11 years old, I was wearing $300 shoes. I should afford that now or more. Mm. And then our boss is like, yeah, but you don't want to spoil them. And I'm like, I'm not spoiled. Uh, maybe I am, right? But, but they're your kids. They're your babies. So. That and I, my mindset, that's to myself and them. I, I want more than I should have because I want my mm. mindset to like keep moving up. See and then when it comes to that, like, I'm here, which is what I wanted, and I still am like, mm, but I want this. And I think you fun. always have to try for more. I think you start getting complacent, and I think you start getting a little unhappy when you're like, okay, this is it. Okay, there's always something else in life. There's always new people you meet. There's always the next step. And I don't think you'll ever really feel satisfied. And that was my too. shit, like, back at where I'm from. That it was the same circle, same people, same environment. And that's not... I was literally... It's... How can I explain it? Like in a box trying to fucking get out. Yeah. 
Literally, I I and everybody's you, so comfortable there. Yeah, I think I told you, um, because I grew up in a small town as well, and like not to diss on it or hate on it, no, but um, I'm not either. Yeah, I love not to, it. <laughs> but there's a whole world out there, and I always bring this meme up to my friends. I think I told you it's like seven billion people in the world, and you think the love of your life is going to be in your hometown. Yeah, like there's just there's so much. I out still there. think it is though. Is that wrong? What's that? It could be. It could be. You know. I mean, there's. Because I mean, like, you don't know. It could I'm be. I like Austin for dating. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like I've had mixed, I haven't uh, seen I have mixed anything. Reviews. The mindsets up here are literally like, just I don't. It's a fast life up here. Yeah, everyone's kind of doing their own thing here. For yes, sure. but I've also noticed everyone is much more friendly and sociable. Oh hell um, yeah! Especially like going They're out. They're so in the welcoming. Nightlife. Yeah, um, and I think that's I, that was the same thing for me. Like I just want to get out of that small town. I want to go to a bigger city. Want to make new friends. I want to. Just be a complete. I want to reimagine yeah. myself. Um, it's a lot of pressure, like we were talking about, um, to move to a different city oh. with starting fresh as well, because you don't know anyone. Um, if you're, you know, if you're starting a new job, as as you, we're not a new job, but like in a completely new place. Everything um, it's is intimidating. new. Intimidating. Yeah, it's so intimidating. Everything's new. Like my office back in back at home was nine people and they were hiring which the total was going to be 12 or 13 which is not a lot of people for and an then office. to transfer it to our office is like hundreds mm-hmm. and i was like i'm never gonna fucking meet mm-hmm. if i didn't talk to anybody in my old office i'm never gonna fucking meet anybody because i'm gonna live at work and then i'm gonna go home mm-hmm. to the boys and i don't know anybody but everything's been so easy, like with me. meeting people. Mm-hmm. My first month and a half, like I questioned every single minute, like what did I fucking do? <laughs> what did I do? The process in getting a place up here is very mm-hmm. different. It's so it's, expensive. Uh, the cost of living is just crazy, but mm-hmm. I am getting paid more, a lot more. Which is more. good. Yeah, which is good. And it does hit my budget, right? But everything's hit different. And nothing worked out the way I planned it in my head. I'm not much of a planner, which is why me and our boss get along with the plans that happen. I can't plan for shit. The times I planned, it never goes through, which is why I'm not going to go that route. Shit always comes up. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I did this irrational decision to move within two weeks oh wow i didn't know that so like you were like i'm gonna move in two I weeks think i still and... have the text messages from my previous landlord where i was like i have this opportunity to leave and i need to start over there august 15th and it was july and she's like can you be out by july 28th so we can do a walkthrough and i was like i remember my friend was like Bitch, that's in six days. And yeah. I was like, yeah. You're gonna move out at the end of the week, basically. So I was like, yes. And I had not moved anything. <laughs> so me and my friends got everything out. Um, my nephew helped me, my sister, family, and my best friend. Um, we uh, we moved everything. I rented a storage and I was looking and it it I decided I'm not going to get a place off of the internet because I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know how it is. Yeah. So I came to my dad's. My dad lives here uh, in Maynard, which is a couple minutes away. Yeah, like it's 30, 40. Yeah. Those first weeks, month and a half, I kid you not, I was in my own head. Mm. In the weekends, one time my mom called me. I would put my phone on do not disturb all weekend and not because I was doing something. I slept one Saturday 16 hours straight. Wow. Well, you were you were probably pretty tired from nah, dropping. I was going through it mentally. Okay. I was mentally tired. I was on the edge of just sending my kids back to my mom's. Oh, wow. I was like, like I should have never brought them and like live over here with me when I didn't have shit like I didn't have my own place you know and I was on the edge and my mom was like well you can't always come back and to me I was like fuck no 
Yeah, you made that your decision. That means I failed. Yeah. And I posted it all over my social media that I moved. Mm-hmm. So that was the biggest thing that was going in my head. It sounds like a really like hard rough I think patch. that's why it feels like I've been here longer than I have been. Because that time felt so long. It sounds like a really rough patch. But... I'm really proud of you for going through Thanks. that. Yeah, yeah and then, I'm so you know, happy. You have, like, you have a really nice place. And, you. you know, we've been going out with work friends. You've been meeting new people. It's, you know, it's, I think, I hope it I lives I do want to say, if it wasn't because of Google, <laughs> I would not be going out and meeting our coworkers. Cause I try. I, I mean, I try to socialize with everyone. But I, I don't I, think you knew that, right? Like, I that? wouldn't go out with them. No, I didn't. Like, not um, even, he just said, hey, you should come out. And I did. Yeah, Which well, I'm not like that. I'm very antisocial with new people because I'm just I'm glad like, you could trust me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you had mentioned... I, I didn't know you were going through it. <laughs> I would have tried to help if if so. Um, but like you mentioned, you were having a hard time meeting people. And, you know, I had actually just started. Like, yeah. I was, had only had a month. When really? I, yeah. When I met you, I was only like three weeks in. So I was like meeting all the new people too. Or meeting people that were new to me. So they were inviting me out, and I thought, well, I mean, we're both strangers, so I mean, let's go out and see what happens. Everyone's yeah. really nice, um, so I'm glad we, you know, we're able to socialize with them. But you know, three months later, it seems like you're doing well, so I'm I'm happy and I'm very proud. I know I'm so happy. Like, I'm happy to be doing this. I'm happy of where I am now. There is some stuff I want more, but they weren't mm-hmm. part of my past five year plan, so yeah. I'm happy to be here. There's a um, there's a song. I love music and I love all kinds of music. So um, you probably don't know it, but there's a song by Billy Joel where he says, only fools are satisfied. I haven't heard it. I really like it, but whatever. Um, I, I, <laughs> I stand by that quote, you know, um, because you just always have to be, keep going for more. I don't know. And that's like, that's my biggest frustration and maybe why my previous relationships not only boyfriend not mm-hmm. my not anyone in as in it doesn't have to be ex, like intimate intimacy or, yeah, relationships or love, yeah. like it could be friends it could be family it could be exes i'm saying in general that's what i struggled with the most like it's not that they don't have goals it's just that i'm questioning like let's grow like mm-hmm. let's get the fuck out of here yeah. let's go get better jobs don't let's... you want more don't and you then, want to travel yes. don't you want to experience and maybe like traveling's not in our budget but mm-hmm. my question is like don't you want more mm-hmm. why are we settling like i never want to settle after this shit i did yeah. this big move five hours away from home alone with my kids i don't have the financial support and i'm doing it and i my I'm not going to settle here. Like, yeah. this is where I wanted well, to now, be. Well, now you know that, like, you've, like, been going through it. Yeah. And, like, now you know you can come up from that. Like, now you know, yes. okay, I've been through some shit. And I can, if I could get through that, like, get my spoiler I said, you know? Yeah, and, like, I have three fucking months here, dude. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my gosh, do I need therapy? Because. <laughs> we all need therapy. But that's. <laughs> I'm like, do I that's fucking the part need of therapy? Because. Ten, I graduated. It, this June will be 10 years. 10 years ago this was my goal everything yeah. i'm going through now this is my fucking this was my goal and i it wasn't a straight it. line but it's part of the journey it's part it's of the experience been a fucking roller coaster. yeah now you yeah but now you know like and i don't even like roller shirt. coasters me either man I'm, yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, i get scared but like now you know like through all the shit you've been through you can keep going and you can yeah. strive for more yeah it's that drive yeah. a lot of people don't have it like i'm here now and i already told the boys because they have a good relationship with their dad. I have a good relationship with their dad after everything. Um, and I was like, whatever happens, whatever is decided, because at the beginning of this, I said, give me till the end of the school year. If you still don't find it home here, mm-hmm. then we'll figure out for you to live at your dad's. Anything to help my kids yeah. be themselves, That's very feel, sweet. feel good. Although it won't be good for me. I have to think about them, like mm-hmm. whatever is going to help them. So that was a plan. And I'm thinking in my mind, if they decide to go with their dad, I'm leaving to New York. 
Like, you gotta do your own I'm thing. Gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, like, I got more plans now. Now you know you can start fresh in a new city. <laughs> in five years, it. I'm gonna look back at this where I wanted to live in New York and I'm gonna be You're in gonna New be York. in New York. You gotta <laughs> manifest that shit. I'm manifesting. That shit has to happen. Yeah. Yes. You have to manifest it, definitely. Um, I then I'm manifesting myself story. going to DC. But yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. New York and DC, baby. Good time to say, truly, <laughs> you could be sponsoring us right now. We could be advertising your 100 calories, um, your tropical. Punch hard seltzer. One gram of sugars. That's actually not bad. So if you're like working out and on a diet or, you know, just so trying to get messed up, <laughs> truly is the way to go. Is what I could be saying, but I'm not saying that because you're not sponsoring unless me. Unless you pay us. Yeah, unless you pay us. <laughs> mm. I'm messy. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. I already spilled one. <laughs> I apologize. But no, I'm, like I said, I'm really happy that you were able to find a welcoming environment and that you're able to, you know, feel confident enough to... Talk to a random stranger, which, you know, we've known each other for about two months now. So it feels maybe longer. Not. It feels like a long time. I, you know, I'm really Is that happy. a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's just because of how and what we do for work. Uh, we're put through a lot of difficult situations. Yeah. Um, where if we don't have someone to fall back on to support us, it's really hard. And I think that's what really bonded our relationship. Um, so that's why so. we feel comfortable talking to each other. Because like, sometimes I've said, oh my God, I've been with you for that long. It's a bad thing. And now like when we say I, it feels longer, I'm like, wait, is it a good thing or a bad thing? To me, it's a good thing because mm -hmm. I was able to build a friendship with someone in such a short little time. Yeah. And it's not a friendship where it's, I have a lot of friendships where it's just party people. Yeah. And it's not that kind of friendship. It's friendship like, if I can't fucking drive home, if I get a yeah. flat tire, yeah. this case, this scenario, like, this is this is feeling personal. Like, you, you're getting to know a whole other side of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I've built a really good friendship with you and other I'm happy coworkers. About it. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy about it. And definitely. Um, I, I like to build that relationship with, like, my close friends. You know, like, whatever happens, if you need help, yeah. call me. Um, so, you know, I'm really happy that, that we could work um, to build that kind of relationship. And I because will be a really hard. good wing woman. <laughs> so what we were talking about, <laughs> what we were talking about before this is that um, I have not been dating for this whole year, I guess, yeah. since December, um, because I was dating last year and I just was not happy with the person I was and who like the person I was reflecting onto other people and like the type of relate the person I was in the relationship and being toxic y todo esto. Yeah. so I was like I need to take time to um, focus on myself and like grow and I think in that time there's been a lot of opportunities of people hitting on me that I <laughs> either am oblivious to um, because oh. I'm just not in that mindset <laughs> or I'm like eh, yeah no so yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes last I thought, oh my god, <laughs> they won't know what last night means, which yeah. is good, which okay. is good. They won't know what last night means. Um, but I'm very happy that you've been able to point out some instances where you're like, hey, I'm like, hello, did you not fucking catch that? I'm a girl. No, but sometimes I catch it, <laughs> um, which is probably not good, right? But um, yeah, yeah, there's just like. We're females, you know, whether we all have our each game different, we know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Um, as well as you guys, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't had that happen to me, but I'm just saying like, come on, dude, that I was just, a bad game. <laughs> yeah. You should call me out when I have bad game, but it's just, it hasn't Not been my, you, it's oh, like oh, the other people, other friends oh, parts. yes, <laughs> the other people that I have. Yeah. Um, I just haven't been in that mindset. So like. I don't mean to brag, I have a really big ego, as you have noticed, and as people will come to find out. Um, so I think I'm this shit, all that, and the bag of chips, and whatever else, you know. Um, so like a lot of people have hit on me this year, and I'm just, you know, since I haven't been in that mindset, I just haven't really entertained it. Um, and so like sometimes I notice them, like, you're just not doing a good job. But, no, like, we're all, what I've learned after, after, you know, ending my relationship, we're all, all, our feelings are about it. Mm -hmm. If you're not ready, like, don't entertain anything. Don't entertain anything. No. That's the biggest thing because I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. You know, you entertain, you entertain a situation, 
That's dangerous. You're opening doors. Yeah. And like we were saying earlier, you might meet the right person at the wrong time because mm -hmm. of you, because you're not ready, but mm -hmm. you entertained it. Yeah. So. Which I feel like that did happen to me um, in December, or I mean, I guess November, October, November, a year ago, a year ago. Um, and I, you know, I was entertaining something because I thought I wanted it, but I just was not ready for it. And so, like, now I know that's really dangerous. You, I try not to play with people's feelings because that's really messed up, so I don't ever do it. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's really dangerous to play with people's feelings because yeah. I, I think a lot about myself right now, but I didn't think a lot about myself like in high good. school. Yeah, in high school. And I didn't think I was attractive, and I was like really skinny and like all this other stuff, so I didn't think highly of myself. At least the earlier parts so um i was like i had no game i was really bad at talking i was an introvert i so can I was see really, that yeah, <laughs> thank no i mean <laughs> it kidding. is i I'm don't so have kidding. very i don't have very good game as it is right now but i was i had a hard time you know like socializing and talking to girls and you know like even talking to my friends so i was yeah. like really socially awkward um so like in every time i did try i failed so i'm like i just you know i i don't yeah. want to talk to anyone and so now like the flip or the other side of that is, you know, I'm feeling really good now. So I, going back to growth, I feel like I've grown from being a really shy person to the person I am now. And I think because of that, I know what it's like to have people entertain you and it doesn't feel good. Like I yeah. knew when I was talking to a girl and she was just entertaining me, like so I could buy her dinner or I, you know, whatever. Yeah. And like the flip side of that is like, oh, I can't ever do that to anybody because I've been there and I know what that shit feels like and I can't ever do that to somebody. I think that's one thing I currently regret. And I don't regret... I do and I don't. Because my feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. And if I want to entertain myself to, you know, for Same. what I'm going through, that's because of me and my feelings. But I'm also fucking up with... So I'm fucking someone up, you know? Yeah. And that's not fair to them. But I'm also, like, thinking of my... I'm being selfish. And I currently did that. Sometimes you have to be selfish. Sometimes, a lot of times we think that we're doing things that are like for us and like, oh, we're being selfish. But sometimes it's just taking care of ourselves. I think if you're up front, it's, it's but complicated. But that's mean it's because mean. I've been on the other yeah, side. Yeah, it's mean. So it's complicated. I don't even know what's right or wrong because yeah. I'm over here thinking my feelings are valid. But I'm also fuck, like fucking someone up and it's not their fault mm -hmm. you know but i mean you're coming around at the, around at the wrong time homie <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah and how are you supposed to, yeah but how was i how were we supposed to know i'm yeah. just saying like there's been not even relationships it's just entertainment that has mm -hmm. happened after my situation of what i'm currently having to work through and heal mm -hmm. through and grieve Cause I think a breakup is a, is I I lost my brother almost I lost my brother three years ago, and that's something that I've been going through and like we learn to live with you know but that's a person who's not there I yeah. can't reach out to and stuff and yeah. a break a my breakup yeah it's... a breakup is even like maybe it, no it I'm not even gonna compare I mm -hmm. I'm it's... comparing it right but it's bad. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard because my world, our, my family's life, world, everything hasn't been the same since the passing mm -hmm. of, of my brother. And then, like, my breakup happens two years later. And that's a person who's there. Mm -hmm. And I'm having to fight myself and not reaching out. Yeah. And it's like, the this grief... I'm fighting because I can't reach out. This grief I'm fighting because it's literally I'm I'm literally grieving somebody who mm -hmm. is there, and it's harder because I'm fighting myself. I'm fighting for that. I'm fight. I'm not fighting for that anymore. But in the relationship, I was fighting for something. Que no más no no iba a jalar like, bitch. He didn't want you. <laughs> you know like, uh, mm -hmm. or me. I don't know what his feelings because yeah. the person's very shut off and. That I knew that, but I fought myself in, and then from there I fought to stay, mm -hmm. and like I was just fighting yeah. something that wasn't there. Um, Interestingly, I used to be a lot like that. 
I used to yeah. just completely shut off. Like, whatever I'm feeling, whatever I'm doing, I'm just going to keep that shit to me. And so that now is hearing... so ugly. I know. So now hearing that side of it... And I've grown in the past couple of years, so I know not to do that shit anymore. Um, first of all, it's a vibe killer. and It's ugly because I don't even know how people can be like that. Yeah. I'm just such an open book. Like, yeah. you're going to know when I'm mad. You're going to know when I'm happy. You're going to know when I'm hyper. You're going to know when I'm sad. Like, and I've always been like that. Yes and no, because being surrounded by so many people, I've been going through it. And, like, I left hometown to mm. because I was surrounded by so many people and feeling alone. Um, so maybe I'm not an open book. <laughs> no, it's okay. So, um, I'm things. just, like, in my thing, I fucked up people after that relationship that could have, that are good people and mm-hmm. were really good people that we could have been something good, maybe, because I didn't even test it. I was just like, it, it was an entertainment to me, which we shouldn't treat people as an entertainment. No, we shouldn't. Friends, yeah. um, people we know because of other people, friends, family, like, our intimacy partners, we shouldn't treat people as entertainment. And right. I've done it, and it's been done to me, mm-hmm. and... That's the worst fucking thing yeah. people can go through. And I yeah. think everybody goes through it. But I think I feel worse that I've treated men like that. But you but you grow from it. So, like, yeah. So, hearing that from you now, um, which I've opened up a lot more in the past couple of years. So, like, it is ugly. It is really ugly to be that way. So, when I look back... And like the me from five years ago would be very proud of the me now because I've learned to open up. Yeah. I've learned to not treat people as, oh, this person's just going to entertain me. Like, yeah. it was just some, I had a really negative thought on relationships because I always thought I was going to be the one to mess it up somehow. So I was like, okay, let's see how long this lasts before you I already, fuck it up. You were already yeah. thinking, let's see like, if I how can, am I going to fuck How am I going to fuck this up? So like hearing your side of it, I'm like, man, that is really ugly. So, you know, going back to the five years thing, um, he would be very proud of me now, I think. Good. And the second part is, you're recognizing this now in yourself, so that means you're growing too. So, I mean, if it was a bad experience in the past, like, you're growing from it, yeah. you know? It's been, at least from what I've known you, it's been two months, and I've seen you grow a lot. Like, I've seen you prosper and thrive in the city, I've seen your attitude change, and I think it's great. So, yeah. I mean, we're, like, all constantly learning, because we... All I have this trauma. Like, we're talking about it right now and we're opening up. But a lot of people don't have the time or the person to open up to. Yes. Um, So, like, I hope people can relate to that at least. I think, like... that we're all kind of going through it. The worst thing for me was being a 21, 22-year-old as a social worker starting into adult mental health. Mm -hmm. I was... I didn't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. It's just... I understand. I was helping people with resources and Mm -hmm. trauma bonding that i needed fucking help on and in the future i was gonna hit those milestones Mm -hmm. i remember one time at the beginning of my career one person who is now a really good friend of mine like we've kept in touch and that's very sweet we have social we're on social media on each other's social media but i would never forget that person questioned my age and he was like, Jenna, you could be my granddaughter. What am I going to talk about with you? Mm. And he stayed my client for four years. And now we're really good friends. That's he very He messages sweet. me to make sure I'm okay. I message him. We haven't in a long time. But I'm 27 years old now. It's mm-hmm. five, six years later. And I'm currently thinking bitch like you used to give money management classes to some motherfuckers you used to give um you know other resources like i'm i'm talking money management because that's my current situation (laughs) with the cost of living in austin texas rather than real grand valley where i come from it's so different um i do understand why people stay in the real grand valley it's very affordable and yeah Given, <laughs> I want to hold on to that way you were talking about though. So, you were providing services that you thought you would need in the future. I think we're scared to talk about therapy because 
when we we're talk supposed about, to be okay. Yes. How the fuck is about, it going to look for yeah. a social worker to need therapy while she's giving it? And that was my biggest fight in my head. Like, mm-hmm. you can't be sad because you help people that are sad. Yeah. You can't react like this because you help people. You tell people not to react like but this. But it's so bad to bury but that. But I've gotten worse. It's so like, bad to bury that. Like, we're scared of therapy because we think something has to be wrong with us. Or, like, we must be really fucked up in the head to need to go to therapy. Yeah. But I think we need it. I, I mean, as social workers, definitely. After this month, absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> after this month, absolutely. The people watching this and know us will understand why. But... As individuals, we all have shit we've been going through. Even if we think about the past five years, we all have shit. That and we're going I think through. single individuals are in the best space. Um, I'm having to fight these battles with kids, um, and I'm not the only one. Like, there's so many single parents. There's so many mm-hmm. teen moms going through it, and will get through it. I respect that so much. I'm just it's saying. So hard. I'm in the mindset where I want to tell single individuals, like, go through it. Go through it, learn through it, grow Mm -hmm. through it. Because I don't have the space to, like, be depressed and learn through that depression and grow through that depression. I got to do it while I'm momming. Mm -hmm. And there was a point in my life where my preteen was going through it. Because so many things happened and we're finally in a better place. Um, But so many things happened for us to get here, which affected his mental health. Mm -hmm. And I was questioning, like, how the fuck am I helping people? And my kid is going going through through it. it And I don't know how to help him because I never thought it would happen in my house. Like, I'm a social worker. Mm -hmm. My kids are going to... I'm going to be honest. And Mm -hmm. I might get shit talked on. Maybe bad, bad. I'm a social worker. My kid's doing good. I'm not. I'm not checking up on his mental health because I don't think he has a mental health. Like, and fuck, I'm 27 years old and I've gone through all of this. Now, now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, oh my god, (laughs) I'm fucked up. Um, No, no, no. But the the thing is, we we, all have trauma. Like working in this field, I want everybody to like. Not every, I can't help everybody, but mm-hmm. I would like for us to be a priority. Yeah. Um, especially single individuals, like, bitch, go through it, learn through it, grow through it. I would never get over that. Like, yeah. because you can, and it's not easy because I, I've known people who who just beat themselves up mm-hmm. and have been suicidal. I worked in mental health before. That we're single and I question myself like, but you could have passed it. But no, yeah. like everybody's mindset, everybody's different. Yeah. I'm just saying like, while well, we're here, get the help you need. Yeah. Because I Don't needed help yourself. and yeah. I, I needed help and I'm like, no, I can't because I'm a social worker. There's a stigma. Like, I can't. There's yeah. definitely a stigma behind it. And now that you mentioned that though, one thing I have like come around to like I didn't have the best relationship with my parents um and like now listening to that and like talking to other people I realize like parents are going through it too so like kids can be mean and like we can say some mean things to our parents so fucked up yeah and now you like now I realize like man they were going through it too so I have like a different respect for people who are parents for my parents for people I guess kids if you have kids you're a parent but yeah for parents um, I was 12 that. years old stealing my mom's car. Mm. Like, fuck. I was like, you know, going back, I'm like, I fucked up so many relationships. So mm. this is it. <laughs> yeah. No, so, you know, I, I, I have a different respect for that. So I hate that there's stigma around getting therapy and getting help. Yeah. Because we all have some sort of trauma. We all have things we need to get over. And even if you don't, having a good relationship with someone you can trust that can give you advice that can hear you out is i mean it's going to be good for your life in general yeah and especially because we work in social work helping people that have been through crisis that have been through trauma 
we can then recognize like, oh shit, they're going through some stuff. And you can kind of like see how other people are going through stuff. I think it gives you a little humility and vulnerability. You, yeah. I need to learn. That's one thing I, I want to learn is I think I'm, I'm emotional. Yes. But being vulnerable enough, like who to be vulnerable with or to oh. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I because, never thought about that. Yeah, because it's okay to be vulnerable, but I don't know if you should be vulnerable with everyone. Why? I think on Thursday after our meeting, we were talking to somebody else, um, another friend, that the one you were saying should have came right now to watch us. Okay. Um, and she was telling us, um, like, we, we have our little three conversation, okay. you know, we keep stuff between us pretty tight-knit. Um, and she was saying, I just like have to watch out what I say to people. Like sometimes we do have to like be mindful of who we say like personal things to. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like you have to be mindful of who like you're going with. Um, and sometimes people don't have like that person to go to. But if you do, um, I would There's say. There's that, that person that makes it feel so right though, but mm -hmm. it's so wrong um, for me. Like, there's that one person I have that is my comfort zone that should just not be it anymore. Like, yeah. it ties need to be cut. But that is my person. Like, good news, bad news, I think of calling. Like, guess what? Uh, I've called crying. And, like, that's my best friend. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just like, when to learn or how to know if that vulnerability needs to be cut with mm -hmm. that person. Yeah, and that's I think that's kind of what I was thinking about because it's very nice to know that people have your back, yeah. but you need to know who has your back because <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to go up to like, I have a lot of friends, but I'm not going to go up to all of them and tell them my deepest, darkest <laughs> secrets or the shit I'm going through, yeah. um, especially when I'm going through it. You know, I have one or two friends that I can tell like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going through it right now. Let's talk. Yeah. And, you know, like, especially, I guess my parents as well, you know, for good news, bad news. But, like, you know, I always have someone in mind where I'm like, oh, shit, you know, like, I'm getting raised. I'm getting promotion. You know, I'm doing yes. this. I'm going on a date. I'm, you know, doing this and that, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I feel very happy and comfortable that I have a couple of friends that can come to me and also, you know, like, talk about their life like that. Um, I, what is it? Like, it's not how many friends you have. It's the quality of friends. Yeah. I've, I think growing up, I just wanted as many friends as I want as I could get. I wanted to have. I'm not popular at all, but I wanted to get as many followers as I can get on social media, which is a very unhealthy, negative thing that we can talk <laughs> about later or in another episode, right? But I just wanted it. You know, I wanted to be so popular and have all these friends. And like now, I'm thinking I have five friends that are like my best friends, and those are the ones I want. I don't Everyone think else, I have. Like now, looking back, so many people were my best friends up until three months ago i look now and i was like what up acquaintances acquaintances <laughs> like, you know, yeah like what up? you know but changing that vocabulary definitely cambiando como um lo relacionas contigo si son amigos si son personas que conoces if y si just... los quiero mucho yes like, yeah si yeah. los quiero mucho pero de de este día en, de este día en adelante Ahí, ahí fue, ahí, yeah. Like, yeah. That was the line in the sand. Ya vivimos, ya yeah. gomitamos, ya lloramos, <laughs> ya todo el pedo. Been there, Pero ya. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yes. Um, I have, I gotta say, this year has been the year for throwing up. <laughs> 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 I had a... <laughs> Not from my end. <laughs> I had a memory, I had a Snapchat Ooh, memory. Every from, time I remember that i want to hug you like i'm so sorry i wasn't I there was, for you no, oh okay. i wouldn't have fucking gotten close to you <laughs> i love the <laughs> i love the text afterwards when i was like hey i'm going through it and you were like thank god you didn't you weren't in my car <laughs> i'm sorry i was like yeah, okay you wasn't in my car <laughs> you're like good thing that shit didn't happen <laughs> and then uh, i feel so bad for otra, you watching otra persona in front of me. Yes. I was laughing like. No. But I'm I mean, like I'm such a bad friend. Am I a friend? <laughs> um, I mean, it happens. Everyone, <laughs> everyone throws up. Um, I mean it's part of going out and having fun too. I don't think, and if anybody that knows me watches this, 
please comment below a memory if I've ever vomited because I don't think I've been there. And if there's videos, I want to see them. No. <laughs> if there's videos, I want to see them. Fuck it. No, I say that because I one of I say it proud. I don't think I've gone through that. Good for you. Um, I have a really good friend. He's one of my best, best friends. Um, and we hung out in College Station for his birthday. And that was the first time I just unloaded. Like, I... I was doing a lot of stuff I shouldn't have seen. I was doing a lot of stuff I shouldn't have been doing. And he like it was for his birthday, which made me feel even worse because I was just like just You made it your birthday. I made it about me. I made that shit about me. <laughs> and this is where we go back to he's very into himself. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Um, but you have to think you're just shit. So you have to manifest that stuff. I always believe you have to manifest it. I don't know if stuff. I manifest it or I really think it. Because with all this manifestation theory going on, I'm like, fuck, have I been doing that? Or do I really think that of myself? Because growing up, I'm telling you, I have all this shit I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I've accomplished all the shit I want to do. Which is very commendable. Yeah. And on social media, I'm not going to fucking post social workers going through it which is what i'm currently having to fucking that is what face we're, yeah that is what questioning we're going like on. am i okay to continue being in this field i'll say this there was a, cut me off because no, i'm no, gonna no, fucking no, get in trouble no, I was, no 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 so i'll say this there was a situation a couple of weeks ago um where there was a person at work that walked up to me and unfortunately we were not able to help them like they expected us to and they said, you just don't want to help me because I'm an immigrant and you don't know what I'm going through. And like, I took that home with me. Like I called one of my best friends and like I, I rented out and ranted because like they were, they made it seem like they were like really special, which everyone is special. But the way they said it was like, you just don't know. And I'm like, if you knew you have more rights, like I'm an immigrant too. So like, and they have more like resources and available to them like if you know my family is going through it much more than you're going through it and i'm still choosing to be here to help you like yeah yeah we've had a long month we yeah. had a long we had a really month long too. fucking month and i took that shit home and i felt so fucking bad like i went to the gym and i wasn't even feeling it like the, and the that's audacity to say that that's one client in that day because you see Clients throughout the day. Yeah. The fucking second I sat in that desk when you went out to lunch and a refugee walked up to apply for services with us and was like, do you feel like working today? Mm. And I was doing something else prior to that, so I didn't catch on right away. And that's one thing about me. Like, if you don't catch me, uh, I, it takes me a while to catch on to what if you throw a fucking hot shot at me, I won't get it right then. I'm such yeah. in your head. I'll go home and think about it and be like, that bitch. Like, you know. No, it's just. We've, I we've, think, we've had a though, really long month. I think, though, having so many opportunities in this big city and the pay that it has to offer in other jobs with the cost of living here, what. Well, reflects a lot on why I'm not looking as I should or if I should I don't know looking I don't really for, know I think I'm okay looking for like elsewhere oh elsewhere okay okay gotcha I don't I don't know where I should because what's keeping me there is I love what I'm doing I just got a promotion mm -hmm. which <laughs> and good for you congratulations thank you I've been pretty well off my my parents have held it all together. Um, none of my siblings and I left without our own that they had built up for us to when we left the house, including a vehicle. Um, so people get that background on me. Um, you know, having a kid young really broke that off for me. Um, and then like, that relationship where my relationship leaving my parents' house at a young age was not a relationship a 16-year-old should go through. Like mm. 16 through 20 years old should go through for him or myself. Um, you know, we were both learning to adult. We were both learning to be parents adult at a young age. Adult with a capital A. Yeah. Like All capitalized. All capitalized. So yeah. we were learning to be 
in a relationship. Mm -hmm. He was my only boyfriend from 12 mm -hmm. years old to 20. And besides being my only boyfriend, I had kids with him. So we didn't experience life outside of us. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying we all have a background mm -hmm. and it's very interesting and important to acknowledge everyone's background whether yeah. they're well off or not i think the saddest stories i've heard personally have been from very successful wealthy yeah. people yeah um so do you think it's because one of the most important people mm -hmm. that i know as of today to this day has a really rough background and to me that's very like Bitch, what? Like, yeah. Do you, <laughs> you think it's because so of? Do you think so? Like, to kind of start start to wrap this up, do you think it's because they had a rough background that they were like, "Fuck, if I don't make it, I don't make it." So they had to get. So they had to put on las pilas para seguir avanzando, and that's what drove them to where they are now. Because there are a lot of people that um are faced with really difficult situations and don't make the cut. Personally, it is for me. And I think someone that wants success, it is for them too. Mm -hmm. um, you have to, what was the quote? When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be ooh. successful. Like, Bitch, where you get all this from? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just pulling shit out. I'm just, yeah, I'm just making I'm stuff just up saying, at this point. Like, I don't even mean to advertise this again. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to advertise, but it's something to think about. So to wrap I, it up, um, what would you give as advice to someone that's in a very very similar situation as you? Someone that um, either A, is moving to a new city and starting brand new, or B, um, the situation you explained that when you were 16. Oh, no, they're so different. Yeah, yeah. So you can they're pick so either different. or. Either or. I won't make you like say this or say I that. I think my main thing is in general, being okay. a 16 year old or moving to a new city is what is your future? Do you want to stay where you're at? Or do you want to like, what do you want? Like, what do you want? Make the you in five years proud. Whatever you're doing. Not even five years, dude, because so much happens in mm -hmm. in three months. <laughs> yeah. Three months ago, four months ago, I didn't know I was moving to Austin. So I'm just saying, like, also, I think it was four months ago, I got my children whole life insurance. And I don't mean to advertise, but it's something to think about. My sister got into insurance and... She started explaining it to me, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to fucking have 100000 to offer my children when they turn 18. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to have six, dollars $7,000 to buy them a car when they turn 15. Mm -hmm. So Honestly, probably more. So probably she, more yeah, than 7, because the cost of living is yeah. just fucking going up from here. So when my sister got into selling life insurance... She was like explaining to me and how I can build my children's success mm -hmm. for when they turn like I'm literally building a savings for them, which is good. And when they really turn good. 18, they can either pull it out or they can continue it at the price that I have, because as you get older, it gets more expensive. Mm -hmm. So I got that and like and I'm saying I don't mean to advertise, but look into it because it's been a, almost a year and it's built up and I can say in five years when Ethan needs a car I can pull It'll that out to buy you know like if I don't have it personally I have that for him when he turns 18 he has that to you know to be okay and one of my main goals right now is be so successful that because I found myself in situations where I'm financially in need and I'm so embarrassed to ask anybody. I don't have anybody to ask. And I just want to be okay, with, like financially well off. If my kids find themselves in a, in a bad situation where they can't pay rent, my you shit's paid able, and yeah, I can pay theirs. You want to be able to help them out. You know, because they didn't ask to be in this world. 
Mm. You didn't ask to be in this world, you know? Yeah. Um, they didn't ask to be in this world, and I just... You didn't ask to be in this world. Yeah. If we go there. So, we're all trying to make it. We're all just, yeah. <laughs> so, I think what I'm getting from this as a final mark is... Um, you gotta set your priorities. Like, really, you have to set your priorities. Like, for you I'm right 27 now, years old, and I'm barely learning about yeah. savings and money management. Yeah. I shop the stupidest. If I have... If I had... Up to last year... If I had two hundred dollars to my name and there was some Gucci sandals I wanted and they were one not the Gucci slippers. Sorry, and I'm, I'm not gonna big, lie. I'm a the big Gucci, Gucci slippers fan. are really comfortable. I got them. They, <laughs> what size? They're my size. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just spent really stupid, and I'm at a point in my life where I'm just like, if both ketchups provide the same ketchup <laughs> like just fucking get the get the cheap one yeah. you know like i'm just at that point They're right both now ketchup tastes the same. and yeah. not because i'm broke i'm just like just priorities be smart. no yeah, it's priorities like, yeah if if your priority at the end of the day they're yeah. both gonna give me the same shit if your priority is the expensive stuff and shit you gotta work hard to afford it if not i mean but i think i was living way outside my budget yeah so i mean same I, I say yeah. I was like, yeah, I understand where you're, yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah, not to say yeah, you were. No, it's like yeah. I mean, I you're understand. Like, yeah, yeah, looking around. <laughs> yeah, no, you have a really nice place. Thank so you. I think it's, I think it's a good way to end and say um, thank you for having me in your place, um, in your home, welcome me in, allowing this conversation to happen. I'm happy you took the. Well, I'm happy that I reached out to you yes, to make this happen. So but I'm happy much. you were also like accepted and we're like really open about it um i think we talked for like 30 minutes before this about yeah. some deep shit i cried i laughed yeah thank you but that's how the conversations are supposed to go and you know like whoever sees this whoever doesn't see this i don't care we cried we laughed we had a really good time and that's what it's here for not them although i would love for you to see it and truly i would love for you to sponsor me it is what it is sponsor if you don't him. yes please because i need the money i'm broke it is what it is. Um, uh, I'd like to say this is the best podcast by um, a semi-depressed, broke social worker. Um, that's about as accurate as it gets. you. Uh, that's about as accurate as it gets. Uh, with that being said, um, I hope to see you again soon. Yes, here. thank yeah. you so much for the opportunity. Like, I've always wanted to do this. I just didn't know how, where, what to do to start off. Um Thank you for taking the initiative and like offering this. This yeah. is so awesome. This is a safe place for everyone. So yeah, I'm glad this Except happens. Except my haters. <laughs> no, <laughs> the- <laughs> fuck them haters. No, we're not editing that. We will edit a lot of stuff here, but we're not editing that. Fuck them haters. If you got, what, nine haters and you want more to make it ten. What did Kevin Williams say? I think they watch more. Yeah, they do. The they, thing is, the TikTok haters feed into saved my the, life. I see yeah. everybody that watches my shit. And like the people who claim to know at, and bring up bad stuff about me, I'm like, bitch, why do you keep watching? The haters feed the algorithm. The haters make yes. us who we are. So yeah. So I was like, if you want to be me, just say that. <laughs> yeah, just say that. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to do all this other stuff. So, anyways, another episode of a conversation about. Thank you, Ugo. Let's get fucked up. We let's got a party to go to. Nine thirty. Let's go. Let's get 930? ready. Nine thirty.